folks and welcome back. We're at the Human Comedy, comedy. we're doing the mission challenges. We're actually skipped along and we're doing the Red Bull Ring, the one hour endurance challenge. And the feature of this race is they're all bopped. So no matter what car you pick, they're all balanced in some such a way. We're going to use the FG1 VG, the, uh, it's the Toyota, isn't it? Yes, it is the Toyota. It's, it's the GR car. It is the, uh, VGT and therefore GR3. It's quite a powerful car at uh, 544 brakes course power with the bop. And as I'm just demonstrating here, you can't change anything. They're bopped, so they're all equally balanced. You can't even change off the fully customizable, uh, fully customizable ECU. Torque is limited as it is. The max power is limited. All you can do is choose the tyres. And we're going to start this one on the softs. So you can see the weighting of the car there at 1,300 kilos. As you see, we're at the Red Bull Ring. You can see the opponents there on the right. And as... My friends list comes up, you'll notice I've blanked it out because I did actually forget. I didn't forget, I just jumped straight into the race. A little smiley face there to cover it up. So settings will be as default, traction control one, default ABS, everything else off. And I will move those around as we go through the race. So no idea what's happened at this point. I've done a couple of laps just to make sure the car's competitive as I always do. Then we go into it. What I do know, oh, just clipped him on the entrance to the first corner and he's given me some back. So what we do know is the AI are going to get what they give, give what they get. They're going to be feisty in this one. So what I realise with all of these races is you have to be on it, making ground before anything. If your car's not capable of catching up, start again. I don't use the car that everybody uses. I use the car that I think will do it and win gold because we're about getting gold, not setting records. So eventually, as the game gets older in its tooth, we'll go out and we'll start doing what we're doing and we'll, we'll get faster. I'm just fast enough to get gold in the way I know how, and that is normally by just doing it my way. So as we open up here in the first lap, um, we started off 13th, I think, or maybe 12th. But it could have been 16th, can't remember if we look back. It's not too far into the past. But as we as we go through this, we're going to start to climb up the tree, get going up the ranks, and we're on power setting one. And it really is quite a grippy car. On the soft tyres, I mean, I'm hoping for my default position, which is either pitting on the 15, the 30, 45. Hopefully that will be pits and fuel, tyres and fuel, but we'll see what does. A little bit of argy bargy occurring at the front. Miss Bortilla again in the Viper, just having a bit of a do with the car in front. He's actually lost ground to the next car up, which looks like a BMW. And he forces his way past the Subaru, Mr. Hizal. So we're going to make ground on them. We're doing well, pick up the slipstream, get past one, get past the next. Watch him clipping up. Oh, look at that. The AI do tend to do that, you know. They do threaten you a bit. Braking just before the 100, using as much as the road as we can. Always lost the back end. Unlucky, we had to go around him, but he's come back. Mr. Rubilar doing quite well. So, first lap, where were we? It was 131.482. And that was the opening lap, so we weren't necessarily flat out through the start-finish line. But if we can keep running 130s, I think that's going to be the pace. That's going to be the target. You only get gold for first in these, so you have to come first. And we got an hour of this, so if we're up to seventh now, we're looking pretty. But let's look at the position to the leader. There he is, 16495. As we go around these corners, he's probably just, yeah, just entering the last corner now, going on to the start, finish straight. He's a fair whack ahead, considering. A few gaps opening up. So it's the Red Bull Ring, this is a rain track, it can rain here and my guess is they're going to set the scenario so it will rain, I just don't know when. We've got lovely clear blue skies at the moment, probably a bit of wind from the, uh, from the south side of the track. But uh, doesn't, there it is, 5.7 metres per second yet. So I believe it is the south side of the track, if I know my positioning of the, the circuit. They've actually changed the layout of the circuit now for the bikes, haven't they? They've put a chicane in just back there. We don't know if that's going to transpire to the F1. Not really sure. But 
but uh, we'll have to see. Up into fifth place. Leader is 17.5 seconds away, so he's pulling out from us. He's actually pulling away. He's making ground in free air. And uh, we've just got to get a shuffle on. We're probably breaking a little bit early, but I'm trying to just make sure we've got tyres, because if you look at those tyres now, look at them, they're starting to definitely show wear on the third lap. So timing 132 on our second lap. So if we're, if we're looking around about 130 laps, that's 10 laps is 15 minutes. And our fuel is telling us seven laps plus the three we're done. So it's going to be a 10 lap, 10 lap to pit. And I generally don't think we're going to get two sets of tyres on the softs. Let's see if we're running 132s, 131s at the end of this lap. We've missed that apex, that was clever. Leaders again pulled out another second, but he's away down the second straight now. There we go, we're 132. So 132s, we're a bit tardy. We probably need to get on it a bit more. Second gear for that apex. Chase this car down, Mr. Fragger. Always near the front, this boy. Always got something to contribute. Whilst we're just talking about contributions, I'd just like to thank those of you that's messaged me over this week about various aspects how did you do this how did you do that and my weird northern accent thank you very much weird it's a bit of a mixy my my accent it's from all over there's a bit of yorkshire in it there's a bit of lancashire there's a bit of london if i if i'm around the wife a lot who is from the south i get a bit a bit cockney rebel but with that we're not too fussed but yeah, just a heads up for those of you, you know who you are. Thanks for the warm, that warm, warm comments and the appreciation. It's, it really is quite interesting to read your comments daily. I know some people are currently struggling with controller and trying to do the eco challenges. Just like me, I struggle with the drift challenges because I'm wheel and uh, I don't tend to progress to the controller for much. But uh, yeah, it's good feedback on the comments. Thank you, folks, and uh, do keep them coming. I'm here to help. Um, you're there enjoying your game and I, I just want to share what I do and make sure you guys are enjoying it too. So finishing lap four into lap five, we've got 60% of fuel just dropped to 59. We've got 5.7 laps remaining. So that just puts us just underneath the 10 lap target. We might need to back off just a wee bit at the end, maybe coast into the corners. Looking at them tyres and I'm not liking it. Left side is showing a bit wear, a bit more wear than the right. But everything's looking a little bit worn. So halfway, well just under halfway into this. 10% of fuel per lap. And uh, we need those, that fuel to just come back a little bit. But we'll measure that as we go. We'll see where we are at the end of the lap. 17.6 seconds behind the leader. And we're four seconds behind the guy in front and leaving Mr. Fraga behind us. I do like this circuit. They really have, I think, represented it well. You can see the crowds in the stands, the trees, the hills in the distance. It's very much reminiscent of what you know of the circuit. It's really quite good. I enjoy it. It's a nice circuit to race on. It's fast, it's flowing. The short course is good too. We used to race that a lot in GT Sport. Again, this is another track used to enjoy in the Subaru versus Evo kind of type races that they used to do occasionally in GT Sport Online, the daily races. Good fun. I think that's something we've lost with, with GT7. They haven't quite captured the, the online side of things as they have in sport. It took a long time to actually get sport to a balance where the penalties match the offence. I think that's part of the issue with GT7 and it's online play at the minute. I won't go near it, not online, not at the minute. It's not worth it. I'm not going to destroy my my pretty moderate average record. I'm not going to not going to let that go. I'm going to just wait for them to sort that out. And I apologise to you guys that are out there trying to fight the battle, but you're never going to win with crashes and bashes and rammers and hammers and all that lot. They, they'll do what they want to until they get chipped out or penalised accordingly. It will soon not become fun for them. But we need to get, as, a, as an audience, we need to get GT7 back to where it needs to be. And that will only come with the devs leading the way. So 
unfortunately it's down to them they've got to get the game right the uh, current situation with the daily spins on the roulette kind of ruined it for themselves really we've all exploited the, the uh, little gift method at the moment and got everything we wanted out of it for those of you that haven't got that far yet and can't unlatch the exploit because you haven't got through the cafe menus well you'll, you, they'll fix it and you'll enjoy the game more than, than what some have had by not being able to win anything at all here we go then revving up to take Mr. Go Lopez and then Mr. Gallo is not far ahead so breaking a little bit late just there but we're in and on it so that was another well, we got a 130 dead in there 138 a 130.8 should I say that was clearly a faster lap on reducing fuel weight and soft tyres that are probably well actually they don't look any worse than they were two laps ago but they're probably just coming on song and how are we looking for that pit stop? Seven laps done. Seven. This is the seventh lap. So we've got 3.3. Oh, just give him a little nudge there, Mr. Gallo. Sorry, my friend. Just kind of misjudged my braking point. See if we can go past you. 3.2. So we're going to be around about a lap of fuel short, I'd say. Well, let's see where we get to. When that turns to three be taking down the inside now he's going to close the door on us and then we're going to put him up there onto the curb because he was not friendly at all so when that drops to zero there it is we will be now running in the last tenth of fuel do you think we could get in the pits on the last lap or we just need to we would probably get in the pits there look when it drops to 2.9 that's when it would go to zero i think we're going to get in the pits there there it goes we'll be in by that point so 30 percent of fuel left Laps 8, 9 and 10, at the end of lap 10 we can hopefully pit, take on another set of tyres. So where's the leader? We're looking at the front of the race now. He is some 15 point, oh, 16 seconds ahead, let's forget the point. It's not worth squabbling about. He's running along the second, the third straight now. And we're thinking about how we're going to catch him here. If I'd have run mediums, do you think there was a chance that we could be in second place and save 10 seconds or so on a pit stop by not changing tyres. I don't know, I've always been sort of of the opinion that this game makes you want to chase from day one. So run the soft tyres, run it as hard as you can go and see where we get to. Just looking at the field, we're pulling away from third place with nearly three seconds up. And we're not gaining on first, he's dropped out to 17 seconds. just getting uh, getting on top of this we're just sort of establishing a place and I'm thinking mm, wondering genuinely genuinely where do we think we're gonna be uh, gonna be pitting on the 15 minute point aren't we really two and a bit minutes to go lap nine we're just entering so two laps to go 1.9 on fuel left we're good for the pit at the end of lap 10 the sky and the weather look good we're not looking like rain at all we're gonna have to flick the rain gauge on just to have a look at some point rear left tires looking 50 percent cooked there's no way they'll do another stint so we're definitely going to take another set of softs, I think. Not a single cloud in the sky. There's one. You see it just starting to grow. Look at it grow. Look at that cloud come up. Oh, my. That went from a little dot and it fades away again. Look, as we get it, as we, as it falls down into the, into the hills. Yeah, rain clouds are starting. So I would guess we're going to have rain at the end of the middle of the next session. It could be a short stint on this set of tyres. I don't really know. Tiny little rain clouds starting. When we come around here, we'll see if any big ones know. There's no real greater clouds gathering. So maybe that's just a bit of a false dawn. 16.2 seconds behind the lead car. <coughs> 
and with that 1.1 laps remaining so we're going to be easy round for another lap I think uh, but it's going to be a long fill up so 15 seconds to the car in front so we're just starting to gain on him we're running 131.6s 131.8 132 1 so tyre's gone off a wee bit or my concentration has one of the two get the power down where is he is he he's just starting to react interact with the lapped cars so that'll be why we're gaining slightly we've down 15.9 16 seconds he's probably just got past the first lap car when we know we're going to start to see blue flags we're going to be on it Wear clouds again so no real reason to look at the rain gauge don't think at the moment we're going to commit it to a set of softs definitely half a lap to go what i have noticed is what i tend to get at the minute though is a little bit of it looks like we've got a sticky brake pedal so i started to sense it about this point in the race that as i was driving down the straight i was getting a red flash on the abs as though the abs was working like like traction control and i don't know i've got tc on one so let's see if you can spot that when it happens folks and uh it will confirm what i was thinking so oh we kind of forgot that we were pitting because i was thinking about the abs here we go into the pits the car in front hasn't gone he's going for another lap we were on softs we've chosen to go softs again and we're on two percent fuel so mr bouvoir is away at 11.5 seconds up quite a bit in that lap around about four seconds which is great mr gallo's gone past us mr lopez has come in for fuel he's at 22 percent so he's going to close in on us a bit because he's got less of fuel fill in percentage terms we've done the tires and we're we're going to get that fuel coming into the car now mr mirzano's come in mr wilk brago's gone past us go we're out build up much quicker than the last race filling up <coughs> thankfully don't really want to spend time standing still so we'll come out in fifth place some 45 seconds off the lead now here's the thing he's got a pit soon he's got a pit for fuel mr solace has gone in for fuel we know we went in 11 seconds down so if we can get through this lap and be less than 11 seconds behind we've gained on him we'll see when he pits how much fuel he's actually going to have and then we'll see what car mr bouvoir's got because we haven't actually seen him he's in on three percent of fuel so we only had two he's down to two percent look it just changed on mediums so he's actually running faster than we are it'd be interested to see what car is in when we see that fuel start going in we know he's actually in his box and uh, he's actually done his tyre change Mr Gallo's in as well a little bit later than he did fuel's going in he's taking fuel on board no pressure just keep doing what you're doing Jimbo we actually put four wheels onto the paint there I'm a little bit worried that we're now going to get a penalty we are actually seven seconds down on him we're up to third we've got mr fragger between us and mr bouvoir let's see if that time changes at all as he came out a bit late back to 9.3 so he's raced off down that first second straight and we actually gained on him by i would suggest almost two seconds we took out of him in the pit stop so we got a faster lap done our outlap for 128 370 but that's not measured equally and fairly that so we're gonna doing okay 9.3 seconds back we're in third place we're now on lap 12 tire wear starting to affect and i flick the rain gauge on because we're looking to see where this rain's going to come from clouds are building we've got bigger clouds in the sky don't know when we're going to see the rain we've actually got the rain gauge the weather radar on the longest range so we're going to see it from approximately 100 miles away so we should get plenty of warning if there's any rain coming in the 
purpose of this portion of the race is to just try and close that eight seconds down we've done well well we've gone a little bit long there we covered that Frag us some room, show us some respect. There he is. Just dropping off behind us with the pull in front brake on the 100. Cut back into that apex. Second gear. Run it hard down the straight. Just as I'm sat here doing the commentary, I notice my. <laughs> really quite bizarre. My video production software is just flicking at me wanting to update it better not if it chooses to update and cut I'll, I'll be well flipping mad I think is the expression however let's just do a quick review see where we are on the pace we're now into second place clocks at 40 minutes 20 minutes of the race gone so fastest lap of the race is us a 138.74 and we just did the last lap a 139.80 so we're on pace with the fastest lap with a full tank of gas and fresh tyres so we are actually making inroads the leader of the race is some 8.4 seconds ahead we've just got to concentrate on no mistakes make our way through the traffic genuinely get ahead down and run the fastest line Try not to outbreak ourselves as we get to the corner. Keep all four tyres inside that white line. Do not transit. Oh, is, is the word transit? Do not transgress over those lines. Just keep all four. Not necessarily all four, but at least two tyres inside the circuit. Mr. Frag has gone for fuel. He's gone. He had 7% of fuel left. So he'd run long. Who's the, uh, the Nissan in the pits? He's the last place guy, so we're just going to start to lap now. Going to take up the bat mark because he was getting blue flags by the looks of it. Oh, so yeah, the blue light was on there and the bright sunlight. Couldn't really see it, and he's come deep on us. Ooh, could have been trouble if he likes it connected. You really need a back marker running into you when you're making progress. Lap 14. Last lap was a 131, just a tenth off the previous lap. So, good consistent lap times. Mr. Robillard just comes out the pits as Mr. Solace goes in. Or was it? No, it wasn't Mr. Solace. Mr. Solace just overtook the car that here. With that, lead car is within seven seconds of us. We should start to see him very soon. We should at least start to see him just disappear around the corner ahead. Can't see him at this point. Seven seconds. He's over the crest of the hill at least. We can't see what car he is. 6.2 seconds. And see it on the weather radar. We have rain to the right hand side of the weather radar. Clouds are starting to build. And we've probably got. Oh yeah, we're going to come around to the 15th lap. So roughly halfway through this stint, 40%. There's definitely rain on the radar. So that's coming in. Just don't know where it's coming from. It's definitely come from the right hand side don't know how it's going to manifest itself is it just going to be a short splash I'm not entirely sure will it actually blow past us because we can't see a massive amount coming towards the center of the radar but let's see 4.4 seconds behind the leader coming into the second corner taking on the third straight he's only 2.9 seconds ahead so we really are catching now he's one of those cars in front can't really see he might be the car on the left the red blue one overtaking the red anything is that gonna be oh it's a 458 ferrari and it looks like a oh it's a mercedes amg amg gt not the sls the other one he's quite rapido but it's 2.1 seconds it's starting to get hazy look at that sky we're looking through that what was blue sky into a hazy it's no longer blue just put the Ferrari behind us, catching up to the Corvette C7. Nice car, I do like the C7. It's good in yellow as well. More cloud building on the radar. Ty's looking good. This is the end of the fifth lap. Half, we're at the halfway point for this stint. And look at that, the rain is actually building from the bottom of the screen on the radar. 
that Mr. Portillo that we just put behind us. The AMG is really struggling to get through this traffic. He's just forced the R8 off the circuit. But the R8 should be moving out of his way. That is not our first place, Mr. Beauvoir's problem. But these cars just won't get out of his way. They should be giving him room. We're going to go down the inside. And we're with Mr. Beauvoir now. So we've effectively done the job we needed to do. He's lost the back end as he tries to accelerate the corner. But he's away, look. He's not running traction control like I am. Now, we're on lap 16. We're running 130s. Fastest lap we've had again down at the 130.268. doing well doing well so let's study the position and see where we're at don't forget we're running this cold not done this before so we're looking at the rain what we don't know is how long that rain's going to last but it looks solid it definitely looks like it's going to rain for a wee while so where are four more laps going to put us four more laps is that rain going to be with us by the fourth lap are we genuinely, I think we're going to start to get spots of rain. Look, there's a little dot coming towards us. Genuinely think we're going to start getting a few dots of rain. And we're going to have to consider maybe pitting a little bit earlier for a set of slicks. I don't know. Would we go intermediates and then slicks? The, the rain gauge on the left-hand side. The, the water depth on the surface of the track kind of indicator. What we know is wets are only required when the water gauge gets to the second tick up from the bottom so not the top one but the first one down if the rain's there genuinely you're going to need wet you're going to at least be needing inters so for me if that rain is always oh, lost it he's proper lost it we've actually hit the lapped car and the leader mr Beauvoir, has allowed us through that was a mistake on his part so we've again applied the pressure correctly and we got the result we needed, but I'm still looking at the rain, I'm concerned. Three laps to go, 34 minutes gone. We're talking laps 18, 19 and 20, and then we want to be pitting. So, oh, just see the rain in the air now. There it is, it's falling. It's not actually showing on the meter because it's just splashing down. I guess is it'll be hitting the tarmac and drying almost instantly with the heat we've had. That uh, car there looks like he's out of fuel. He's running so slowly. It can't be affected by the water, surely. Got no rain on the rain gauge. There we had it. Did you see the ABS flashing there as we were on the straight? Interesting. It just caught my eye. Three more laps to go. Then 18, 19 and 20 if we're going to stay on course. Uh, the lap times are just dropping off we just put in a 132 then a 135 that was encountering the slower traffic Mr. Beauvoir is with us again he's just quarter of a second behind us looking at the rain gauge just taking in consideration what's happening three more laps it's around about 35 mile away the rain and the rain the wind is traveling at 8.9 so it's round about meters per second 8.8 .8 meters per second so if we would do a rough calculation that is around about two and a half laps away don't ask me how my brain does that but it's just sort of guessed put a rounded figure in it's gonna be around about two and a half laps so that's on chance on, on par for for a pit stop as per our estimated window 0.7 seconds up on the on the second place car car in front 11 place mr hazel is getting the flags tires looking a bit cooked i think at this point if we're considering the best things to do if that rain was to hit us halfway through the lap i'd rather be on wets than on dries for half a lap return to the pit so let's see how we go let's see if we do we get this round if if genuinely the rain is anywhere near us because don't forget it's going to take 30 seconds to change tires and refuel that 30 seconds is going to be around about a third of a lap so we could get the rain and look at the sky it really has come over look at that blue sky has gone it's dark so yeah potentially this is lap 19 so we've completed 18 laps 
and if we need to pit look at that rain gauge it is potentially 10 miles away now so we're going to be one lap away my thought process pit at the end of this lap get in get tires changed get in before the rain actually starts heavy because i believe it is raining now i can see it there's nothing on the track there's nothing on the rain meter what are we going to run settings wise i think we might go traction control 2 as the rain starts to build we might drop fuel consumption see if we can run a little bit longer and reduce wheel spin try and keep the car all four wheels on the ground yeah the rain's coming i can hear it now i can actually hear it bouncing off the car it's on the windscreen i can see it now here it is it's starting to come so we're running 134s 135 now is the time i think there it is the spray is definitely on the trap see it on the rain meter we just bumped the guy in front i'm gonna go pits i'm gonna call it we're gone early mr bouvoir's gone for it he's gonna try and put another lap in try and carry it through on his on his medium tires we're gonna change to wet so here we go we've got 13 percent left of fuel so we've got a quicker fill up because we use less And with that being the case, we're one lap, half, one lap off our stints, but look at the time, 30 minutes remaining. So even if we did two more stints of 10 laps, we're on for it. I just think we're going to be a little bit slower with the rain. So here we go, fuel going in. We're still in second place, some 37 seconds ahead of the, second, like the third place car. So I would suggest we're going to get out in second, and then it's exactly the same process as last time. We're going to be racing the first. Mr. Gallo has just come into the pit, so he's not taking us for second place. Sorry, going back to where we were. We're going to be thinking about um, ultimately doing exactly the same thing. We've pitted one lap early. It's down to Mr. Beauvoir to get a faster lap in than we do on our outlap. His in-lap's got to be quicker than our outlap, and if he doesn't, we're going to get in front. But let's see. You saw a little strange beep there as it came out the pits. Unfortunately, I had to take a quick pit stop myself. So I did that quite conveniently as we came out the pits. Interestingly, I discovered you couldn't pause the race whilst the car was in the pits. That scene doesn't allow you to make a pit stop, which is a bit bizarre. We're incredibly slow at this point, really slow. 34 seconds behind the lead car, 36 seconds behind the head of the car behind us. We have not yet seen Mr. Beauvoir dive for the pits. We're on wets. This lot are on slicks. We've got traction control on two. And we're making progress. We are going faster than these boys. Mr. Beauvoir's just hit pit lane. 17% fuel, medium tyres. Let's see what he takes. Mr. Rubilar went to wets. What is Mr. Beauvoir going to take? Mr. Miyazano's on inters. That's an interesting call. He's on 99% fuel. Did he pit from wets, from inters? Oh, that's bizarre. Oh, we've gone off the circuit a little bit. Let's see if we can make that. Are we gonna, I've left the circuit again. Oh, we're losing it here. Oh, this is terrible. Mr. Beauvoir has, oh, we got a second penalty for that transgression. Even though we're incredibly slow, Mr. Beauvoir is just leaving pit lane. There he is driving out of pit lane now. I saw him on the right hand side. That's his spray ahead of us. So we're three seconds back. So that is an improvement, folks. I think. Is it an improvement? Were we ahead of him when we pit him? We were. He's actually come out on top there. I believe. He has actually come out on top. <coughs> Mr. Gallows on Inters. Why is he on Inters? Have they come in off the outlap on wet and then change to in no they've gone in on inters now they need to change to wet they've all chosen inters instead of choosing wets they must have been informed by the pit wall that the rain wasn't going to be that bad but look at it you can see it on the rain gauge bottom bottom left hand side of the screen it is into the third sector of that gauge that tells me that wets are required to be fastest yeah, there you go, Mr. Gallo, all changing to wets. So does that mean Mr. Beauvoir, ahead of us, is on inters? And we're going to see him pull in for wets. That's going to be a tragedy, isn't it? 
Oh, that's not going to be fun for him. And he's actually pulling out time on us, look, 4.4 seconds. 4.8, I'm just serving the penalty, that one second's going to scrub off. That was quite bad, actually, that, that, was, that was more... More of a penalty, it seemed, because of the wet. Where is he? Where did he go? He's actually gone in on 93% of fuel on Inters. So he had the wrong tyre choice, so he's now had to pit to take, to take the wets. So we're 21 laps, 22 laps. We, he's not actually changing tyres just yet. Is he going to fill up with the fuel or is he just going to come out and chase us down? Because ultimately, if he's changing to wets and he's in the pits, he might as well take the fuel. He did take the fuel. Car appeared from the right outside of the pits. 911 RSR, what a gorgeous beast that is. If there was any car you choose to race, that would have to be in your top 10 choice at least. <laughs> Beautiful beast. So we're 12 seconds ahead of the second place car. And we're starting to get a little bit of traction loss as we pull away. So that means it's getting wetter. Getting wetter. There's the rain. We're about middle of the rain now. So if we're, it's going to be sort of five laps of rain. What would be interesting, yeah, you can see the weather clearing up just on that rain meter. We're halfway into it. We did kind of two and a bit laps with a pit stop, so... I wonder if we can push these tyres at least to 15 minutes, so another nine more minutes of rain, and then if we can get on to slicks, there's a chance we can finish the, the race on a set of slicks, if it's going to clear up that twitch. Oh, we've just got to keep that throttle balanced nicely, but traction control 2 is helping there, just to keep us on the surface, I mean at the end of the day, Traction control 2 is going to slow you down out the corners at the at the benefit of not having uh, the back end swap ends, if you see what I mean. You don't want the front being your back for a while, spinning out as you come out of a certain corner, which, which uh, ain't going to help, is it? So here we go, into lap number 23. And uh, away we go. What else can we highlight to you at this point? There are patches of water over the track, so whilst I'm using um, the Toyota VGT, you could be using any car you like. Um, I think I think most people in this kind of race will be using the AMG if you've been following the guides. It is the car to use, I think. We're doing it slightly differently, but with that, there is more chance of the car having traction loss because it's got a lot more power. Look at that car on the left. Porsche 911 RSR he's going to come in front of us and this is the weird thing about the AI they will try and overtake us if they can and he's we've just run it just a tad wide he's going to go in front of us but now here's the thing he's a lapper so we were ahead of him for lapping and now he's getting the blue flag look. so so mandatorily rather than just try and race to get away from us he's going to get the blue flags and he's going to slow down so he's going to see him and the AI doesn't kind of react and respond that well to it without clearing up the sky and we are we're probably three laps off the end of the rain which is awesome three laps four minutes 50 will take us to 18 something and then three more laps you can see that another 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 nine minutes that'll take us to 23 minutes no it takes to 13 minutes that would give us eight laps of wet of wet running with a dry line, potential slicks. Do we need to, my question, take Inters stopping twice? With some six seconds ahead of the car behind. Yep, just had to lean in and make sure that wasn't 16. It's definitely six. Lap times are really poor. 154s, 156 since leaving the pits, but we are running traction control too. We, I think the fuel map might be on three or four, just trying to stop us wheel spinning and braking traction. We're teetering round corners, really. The lap car 
really has pulled away from us. We could probably go much faster here. I'd say two more laps of rain, looking at their rain gauge. Tyres are not showing any sign of wear, but look at that, the rain gauge has actually just fell away from the third mark and then it popped straight back up. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. At 24. First out of 20th cars. Mr. Bouvoir, seven and a half seconds behind. We're doing good, folks. We've actually got this one under control. It looks, don't curse it. Oh, Jimbo, don't curse it, mate. Keep going. <coughs> I do tend to try and recall these races as they happened and give you the story I was going, trying to tell you what I was thinking, what I was feeling. And as I do that, I look down at the rain gauge and think, looks like one more lap. One more lap under rainy conditions. We should start to see the rain dissipating. We can see the clouds thinning. There's some white clouds out there, not not black so out from the dark into the light that massive that crane how high is that it's got behind the mirror it's that high we actually put in a 150 lap time there and the rain is starting to back off look the rain gauge is taking a drop or two when they say there's standing water on the track you'll see that rain gauge as you go through a puddle you can see other cars splashing they're going through puddles and you can actually see that standing water and as you go through the standing water the, the depth gauge changes they really have modeled that quite well there we are end of the rain we're just coming through that the end of the waterfront and the rain is just starting to ease off that little bit more on the rain gauge so what we've got to look for now is we're going to start to speed up because we've got a bit more confidence not sure what we're going to do with traction control just yet but let's try and see if we can we can increase that speed start putting some faster laps in dry line looks like it's already starting to appear look look at that are we getting somewhere on the tires it doesn't look it so these tires are doing really really well for a set of wets we're some six seconds ahead of Mr. Bouvoir, we're doing good. We don't want any real penalties right now. It would be a sacrilege to just run through this corner because we outbreak the self. We're catching the 911 RSR and he's going to the pits this time in. I can only imagine he's going to start the process of coming back onto slicks or is at the end of his uh, fuel window. He might come out on wets. Would he come out on wets? The gauge is still saying intermediates. Once we get down to that marker of the first marker gauge, and it's still bobbing back up. Look, it was right into the water there. He's cut Mr. Bouvoir has gone into the pits on wets at 66% fuel. Let's have a look what he comes out on. He's filling up fuel. Is he generally still on? No, he's on. He's come out on mediums. So he's gone straight from wet to mediums. Well, that tells me what I've got to do, doesn't it? Where's the time? We did a 146. Is that? It's not going to be fast enough. Interesting stuff. All the rest of them are going in for their wets. They're on wets going in. Taking fuel, Mr. Lopez. Took it to 90% because ultimately we've got 17 minutes left. He come out slicks. He come out on the softs. There is no rain left on the gauge anywhere on that radar. We've still got clouds. It looks like the dry line is definitely forming. When do you think we should pit? Do you think we should just watch that rain gauge and wait for it to go one more? Should we pit? No, we're going to go one more lap. We're going to make sure that that rain is definitely backing away. I don't want to pit for a wasted pit to be back on slicks. I can't see any rain on the calendar on the on the radar radar. So we're 44 seconds ahead, so we can genuinely make a free pit stop here, and I think that's us done. Look at the spray coming off that car as it comes out of the pit lane. That's the 458. 
Cars are definitely, there's one car there on intermediates, Mr. Miyazano, 90%. So, did he go back into the pits off the slicks and put the inters on? Looks like he may have done that. Because it is still wet out there, look, the rears are just starting to pick up a bit of red, so the, the, the wets are just starting to wear. The fuel gauge is down to number one, Mr. Fraga, they're just trying to close us as we... As we enter that corner on the wide line, car in front spraying. Look at the wind blowing from the left. The wind's actually changed direction. It's blowing down the circuit now. So the wind has moved. <coughs> I've got a bit of a tickly cough today, but uh, all we need is a little bit of the old tequila just to uh, wet the whistle. Oof, here we go. I don't know what was up with that with car, he was incredibly slow. Maybe out of fuel, maybe on the wrong tyres. Definitely think the circuit's drying now, I think. One more lap, one more lap, I definitely think one more. Got a dry line, but the tyres are good. That was a 140, so six seconds up in the previous lap. Got a 139.6, so we're just getting to the limit of the wets, I think. Probably time to pit, end of this lap. See what we can do. It's roughly taking us to lap 29, so we're just into half a tank of fuel with 14.58 minutes to go. So it'll be less than one stint. Tires will be enough, fuel will be enough. So let's do it. Let's pit at the end of this lap, see how we go. I genuinely think that is probably the right tactic, but the rears, the rears, 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 are really starting to wear, as opposed to the fronts. Just feeling a bit, oh, we're having to be a bit gingerly into corners. We're doing 45, the second place car is 45 seconds behind us, so we're still maintaining a free lap. I don't think we're doing so bad here. A free lap, three pit stop, three cars in front of us. And they are a good 120, 130 yards ahead of us. Look at them go. Still kicking up some, we are catching them and a fist, aren't we? Oh my Lord. Just seeing how fast we're gaining into them. It's just Mr. Yamanaka who is on the inters. Are we gonna, yeah, we've overshot that corner. Let's get into the pits. We weren't supposed to. Car off to the left. Oh my, that was a bit wet round there. Look at the wet, wet weather. The rain gauge is up to two. Oh, have we made it? We, are we going intermediate? No, 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 no. Choose the softs. Choose the softs. That made me think. 50, 32% of fuel. So if we fill right to the top, we've definitely got enough fuel to run to the end. We've got 44 seconds. We've dropped a couple of seconds there. We're in. Take the softs. Pick up the dry line. There's something else we haven't got quite right. It looked like it was putting wet tyres back on the car. There was a puddle there coming out pit lane, see that? We are incredibly slow. What's going on here? It's 12 minutes, 56 seconds left of the race. I think pit lane, oh look, wow, pit lane is incredibly wet. Let's get back on the dry line. Here we go, we're on the dry line now, and the wet gauge on the left hand side, the water, depth indicator is just underneath the one so we're good we've got a dry line we can we can run this let's try and pick up where mr boudoir is we're looking like one minute 11 seconds ahead i don't quite understand what's up there we go back to 36 so we only lost eight seconds due to that pit lane did he pit as well fuel gauge down we're on power one 10 laps of fuel remaining, that's cool. 37 seconds, we've just got to keep this in order. And by order, I mean keep it on the track. Let's not lose it, let's not swap ends. Let's just drive these laps. We've got to do 140s or better. Yellow flag. What's happening down here? It looked like a car up in the gravel just then, just ahead of us. And my guess is he's going to be going quite slow up this straight he's dropping gravel over there there he is look we're gaining on him 
Let me see what his name is. That was the Aston. Is he going to the pit? No, he isn't. He's carrying on. Back up to 45 second leads. I don't know what. It's Mr. Robillard that's behind us, not Mr. Beauvoir. So Mr. Beauvoir's probably been off somewhere. Probably been off into the grass or struggling a bit. I don't know. It's a bit bizarre. That dry line really has opened up coming down here. The, uh, the water depth indicator. We went to traction control 2 just then. We're just going to put it back to 1. Fuel, gauge on, fuel map on 1. And, uh, the water depth gauge is showing well below the 1. Now it's back up. So there's water on that corner, which is natural. You could see it running off the tarmac, I guess. Kind of makes sense. 45 seconds ahead. Lap 30. Just over 10 minutes to go, so we're looking at six more laps, 36 laps for the end of the race. That'd be pleasantly nice. Target was 40. So if it hadn't rained, we'd have got 40 laps in, I think. Which which would be good, but with rain it's always a you're gonna be going much slower with rain. It is it really is quite a good lubricant for rubber on tarmac. We don't like that. Come around to the end of the lap. Let's see what we're going to do for a lap time. This is the first clear lap from the pit, so we'll gauge where we are. Sort of wets versus slicks time. There's a mess up going around this corner last time, so let's not do that again. Back end kicked out there on the entry to that corner. I think we picked up some some lubrication as we went around that corner. There you go, 135. That tells us four seconds ahead of the previous full lap. So it was the right choice to make, even though that's kind of three laps on. It was the right choice to make. We've got Blue Sky again up here in there, look. The wind has genuinely changed direction. It's got to be quicker, so it's, it's going to blow and dry the track some more. Helps with the story. Not entirely sure that they've modelled wind drying of the track. I don't believe they may have. But if the sun comes out from behind that cloud, this track could dry up big time. We're some 50 seconds ahead of the car in second place. So if we've got something in the region of five laps to go after this one, he's got to make 10 laps on us a second. He's going to have to run 120s to catch us. And he'd still have to pass us, which he might find a challenge, the width of my back end. Quite a wide car, one would suggest. But, uh, just as we run into the end of the race, just gonna again, I've given out you commenters a bit of a shout out at the start. I think all of you else of you, if you if you do get to this point of the video, you, you're doing it for a couple of reasons. You're doing it because a I think you enjoy it. B as somebody said, I've got an interesting accent and I can be interesting to listen to. I do keep it topical, I've been told. So, there's three reasons for you to watch the video all the way through. But also, I hope you're doing it because... Oh, no. What happened there? The back end just broke free as I braked. Interestingly, two cars coming out the pit lanes. Let's see if we can get that back on track. Come on. Yeah, the, it's a bit wet, that corner of the track. I think the wind's not drying it quite as much as we anticipated. Anyway, back to the subject I was on. Just saying thank you for getting this far in the video. Some of you do watch it this long, and I do see that in the statistics. And uh, I do appreciate any feedback. The one thing I haven't had is any feedback on the type of videos. And I, I hope you appreciate that I'm giving it a one hour video because it's a one hour event. And it's not all about just knowing which car to use and go out and race it. I don't tell you the strategy I'm going to use for a couple of reasons. One, I don't know what it is because I've never done the race before. And B, I want to give you the understanding of how it works. You know I've won the race because I've posted the video because I don't do anything else. I only post when we win. So ultimately, happy days. Again, thank you. And it's not again, it's the first time. Thank you for watching the videos through. It's appreciated. And uh, at the end of the day, and it is the end of the day, it's pretty late when I get these done after a full day at work. I've got another two hours of video processing when I merge this all together with the video. 
Because there's no voiceover. This is the voiceover and it happens after the fact. I've got a couple more hours of work to get this posted and I try to post at least one of these every day. I miss the odd one because I get out of sync because I haven't won it. I am struggling with the Alsace video, not because I haven't got the right car. I know which car to use. I know the Alsace track needs you to use that, that one car, the Chaparral 2J. But I didn't realise I didn't have it. I thought I bought that car. Genuinely thought I did because I know it's fast. Oh, that Viper nearly took us out there. See it in the mirror. Holy puppy Lap 33, five minutes to go. Even with that off, we're some 55 seconds ahead of the car behind. We've just got to measure this pace to the end. Six laps of fuel to go. We're good. So with Alsace, I'm, I'm kind of struggling because I want to do something different. I have genuinely done a couple of engine swaps. I've engine swapped the Willys Jeep. I've tried to engine swap the Porsche, the old Speedster, but it wouldn't have it. I've swapped the Comfort Bus, the VW Camper, the old uh, bay window, and that's just a powerful too fast. I've swapped the Beetle, again it's just too quick, I don't like it to break. I've swapped the Mini, that's got the Honda engine in it, and again, it just wheel spins up the straight, it's not fun to drive. I can tell you this, I have found another suitable car, I just can't get the setup quite correct. And I'm working on it. It's the old Eco car from the Gone in the Wind Challenge. The old Nissan Skyline 2000 GT, square body job. If I can get that rev in, you'll have that uh, in the next couple of days, folks. And then somebody did say they want, uh, they're want they looking forward to Maggior. I've just been shoved out of the way by that Viper. He got me in the end. See, he got us to swap ends there. Just gave us a nudge as we came through that apex. And the car just doesn't want to grip and go. There's still water on that corner. Got to be careful with that. Now back on it, it's still 55 seconds ahead. We're not uh, we're not losing much here, folks. Just got to keep concentration. So we've got Maggior to go. And then, that's the Lego Maggior. Um, after that, we've got two other races to go. The GT prototype test there's two more for the cafe menu i know which cars i'm using i just haven't found a happy balance of how to do the race so I've, i'm doing a couple of laps just to test the car out and i don't like either of them they <coughs> excuse me they don't seem to be the cars that i want to use i'm not confident with them so just to give you a bit of understanding about how the process goes and if you are interested that's that's where i'm up to but once I've done those four videos that we're talking about, I haven't really got much else to do unless I'm going to do variations of the race I've done. Um, I don't necessarily want to give the game a break because I love it. It is a great game. I've enjoyed all the tests. But I might slip in a couple of videos from different other formats. I know I haven't done any ACC. I haven't actually driven any... Um, What's it called? The one that's the subscription one. The brain's gone. I racing. I haven't raced I racing since GT7's come out, and that's a travesty because that's the quid a subscription I've paid and not driven it. I haven't paid a hundred quid for a two-year subscription, so it's fifteen quid that I've spent without actually racing. So might do a bit, a couple of I racing videos. We've got um, race driver grid legends got dirt two got a couple of others that we can do but with that folks um generally i'm really digging this game they've got a few things wrong i know that but uh, that's where we are so let's concentrate back on the race 42 seconds ahead of the car in second place we're lapping up to car 13 and i think actually that's a second lapping we're up to lapping the car in fifth place by the looks of it 4.1 seconds, sorry, 4.1 laps of fuel remaining, two minutes to go. We're going to cross the start finish line and we'll be on to the last lap. Tyres look like they're wearing evenly. We've actually done six laps, I think, by coming at this coming out of pits. And we are, by the looks of it, 
tyre wear is looking relatively good. We should be putting them some good lap times. What have been doing? Oh, yeah, we've been spun about a bit and banged by the car from behind. So we've done a 135, a 141, a 136, 148. So, yeah, we're not consistently quick at the end here. There we go, 1 minute 29. That'll get us halfway around the lap, won't it? Now we're about seven seconds short. If we put an absolute perler in here, we can get another lap, which will give us 137. I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to be about five seconds short by the looks of it. Just as we're going round the final corner, I think the old timer's going to tick off. And we'll get that if we don't make any mistakes, and that's the key bit. But with a lot of events, I kind of switch off and lose concentration when we know we've got it won and that's not a real sign of a winner is it but uh, happy days let's keep shrugging on we've got to keep making progress we've got to get to the finish line and win this event that would be good if we can I think we will. I don't think there's much chance of somebody overtaking us if we come through this complex for the last time. 45 seconds in the lead. We're looking good, folks. So as we come to the end, 13, 12, 11, 10, yeah, we're not going to get another lap in, but it looks good. even though we're trying, will we see our lap time for this lap? Lap, lap, lap. 26, two seconds, one second, just after the corner of 30. We don't put the fastest lap on at the last lap of the race. Come across to take the flag. There it is, first place. And thank you very much, folks. 36 laps. Finished in first, so that's gold all the way through. Two more races in this series to do. Gonna have a crack at one of them in a minute, I think. We might have to go at the Maggio one. Definitely got a car to do that race. And there we go, 45, 46 seconds ahead, give or take. One minute, one hour and six seconds for the race. It was just a bit clip of the video at the end of the replay, but we'll never show you that. And there it is. Really appreciate you watching, folks. Thank you very much. Um, there's an interesting thing. Look, there's an Ismo GT8 GT3. He did 36 laps. Aston did 36 laps as well. And there's us in third place, all on 36 laps. So, thank you very much, folks. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.